Okay, to get started here, I have a fresh Ubuntu 22.04 server installation. The only thing I've done so far is an APT update, APT upgrade, and a reboot. And now here we are logged in back at the prompt. Now, when you're installing Liberty MS, you really need to make sure what user you're going to be running these commands under. Uh, for most of them, we're going to be running it under root, but a couple of them we're going to switch to the Liberty MS user, then switch back out of it. So just keep in mind what user you're in when you run one of these commands. So for right now, we're just going to go root permanently because we're going to be root for most of these first commands here. So let's go root permanently here with sudo i. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be installing here are some Ubuntu packages. Uh, these are things like the database, Nginx, the web server, Git, fping. Uh, we can just go ahead and run this command here now that we are root. We then need to create the LimbreDMS user. We can just copy and paste this command. Okay, for this next step, we're going to go ahead and clone the LibreMS repository from GitHub. So we're going to go ahead and copy these two commands. This is actually going to download the LibreMS software and install it on your server here. Okay, now we just need to change the permissions on the LibreMS directory since we did all that under root. So let's go ahead and copy these commands. Okay, for the next step here, we're going to install some uh, PHP de dependencies. The Liberian MS's main programming language is PHP, so uh, we just need to install a couple of PHP dependencies or packages to go along with this. And it, in order to do this step, we actually need to switch to the Liberian MS user we created earlier. So we just do an su dash Liberian MS. And anytime you want to switch to the Liberian MS user, just make sure you're root first to do that. Now let's go ahead and install these packages here by copying these last two commands here. Okay, now when I copied and pasted those two commands, I typed exit at the end, and that actually logged me out of LibreMS user, and I'm back at root now. So this is just talking about if you uh, have a proxy and you might need to get around that. Uh, so the next step is here, let's set the time zone. Okay, we just need to set the time zone in two different places here for PHP, and then we also need to set the system time. But uh, they use VI, and you're more than welcome to use that. Uh, I'm going to use Nano instead, uh, just easier for me. Uh, I'm going to do a Control W on here, and then I'm going to look for date dot time. Okay, and this is where you're going to want to uncomment it and change this to your time zone. In my case, it's America, New York. Okay, we want to do a control O to save and a control X to exit. Okay, we're going to do the same command to the CLI. Control W, date dot time, uncomment. Control O to save, control X to exit. And we also need to set the uh, time on our system itself. Okay, now we need to start configuring the database a little bit here, and we need to edit the MariaDB server config file here. So same thing, I'm just going to nano this file. And we just want to add these two lines under the MySQLD section. Okay, control O, control X. Okay, and right here we're going to be enabling MariaDB to start on a reboot and also just restart the service since we changed some configuration. Okay, for the next step here, we need to actually log into the MariaDB database. So we'll do that by a MySQL space dash U space root. Enter, and now here we're actually going to create the user that's going to be responsible for managing the Liberty MS database, and this is actually we're going to set the password. So uh, later on in the GUI, it's going to ask you for the Liberty MS username and password to connect to the database, and this is the password here. So you, you should absolutely change this from password to something secure that you're going to use. Uh, in my case, since I'm showing the world, I'm going to use password. 
Okay, so the next section here, let's configure PHP FPM, and this is responsible for executing any PHP code that you're going to need to do when you're uh, browsing around in the LibreMS web GUI. So let's go ahead and copy this template file here. Okay, and then we also need to edit this file. Okay, they want us to change the lib www to liberatemss. And also the user and group to liberatemss, liberatemss. Okay, we want to go down here to this listen path here and we want to change this. Okay, control O to save, control X. Okay, they're also saying that uh, because you're only using Liberatimus on this server, you really should be, uh, that you don't need this www.comp uh, file. So uh, if we actually go into uh, this director, we can actually delete it. Okay, let's go ahead and get the web server configured here, and we're going to be using Nginx in this case, and that's really the only option. Uh, I think everybody moved to Nginx. Sorry, Apache. Okay, so we just wanted to nano this uh, conf D file here. Actually, this is going to be blank because this is a file we're going to create. Uh, so we'll do that. And we want to copy and paste all this, but you want to take note of the server name here. You want to change this to either your, the IP address of your server or the fully qualified domain name, uh, either one, uh, whatever you're using to actually put in the URL uh, that you want to put that in there. So for now, I'm going to put my IP address. Okay. Okay. Now they're just removing the default site here that comes with Nginx. And finally, they're telling us to restart Nginx and that PHP FPM process that we had earlier. Okay, so the next step here is talking about SE Linux. We're not going to worry about that. We're not going to worry about the firewall. Uh, this LNMS command, uh, you'll use this to actually set configuration uh, in LibreNMS. Sometimes you can't set configuration in the web GUI, and you want to use this LNMS command. I have another video on how to use this LNMS command to set configuration, but uh, there's a whole bunch of other stuff you can do with it, but this is just enabling auto-completion for that command. So let's go ahead and enable that. Okay, so the next section here talks about configuring SNMPD, and you don't really need to do this to make LibreNMS work. This is just so we can monitor the server itself from min LibreNMS. So if you start to add like maybe 50, hundreds of devices, you, uh, depending on your CPU, you kind of got to watch out uh, uh, how many devices you're adding there because eventually you're going to max out the CPU. So we can actually monitor the server and, and watch for that and alert for that. So uh, this is just setting up SNMPD on the server itself, which I'm actually going to do. Okay, we want to nano this config file here. Okay, the only thing I want to do here is just change the community string. Okay, this next uh, command here is just running, is just downloading a distro script uh, onto your server. So when SNMP or when LibreNMS pulls this server, it just figures out what distro I'm running. In this case, it's Ubuntu, but you know, it could be like CentOS or Red Hat, I don't, you know, all these other distros out there. So this script just attempts to figure out what distro you're running. So in LibreNMS, you kind of have a better idea of what kind of server this is. Okay, we're not going to worry about cron jobs because we're going to be running the dispatcher service. So let's not worry about that for now. And we have to do this uh, log rotate here just to rotate the system logs. Okay, now it's saying we should be ready to go into the web installer. So let's go ahead and give it a try. All you need to do is HTTP uh, into your web GUI. So let's give it a try here. Okay, would you look at that? We just went to the IP address of our server here, and we got to the LibreNMS pre-installation checks here. So it's just making sure that we did our job in the CLI portion of this install process. So you just need to click these uh, things over here at the top to move forward. Uh, and this is where it's going to asking for that LibreNMS uh, database password that we set earlier in that configuration file. So let's go ahead and type password for us.
Okay, the credentials were correct or else it wouldn't pass this. Now we actually gonna build the LibreMS database now when we hit this button. So this is actually gonna create all the tables and, and start uh, getting us ready to actually start adding devices in here. Okay, we just need to create an admin user to log in. Okay, uh, this is asking you to set the update channel, and I would actually recommend setting this to monthly if you're going to be running this as in a production uh, system. They have daily, which is pretty much the latest and greatest, but you know, latest and greatest is not always the greatest. So uh, sometimes we have uh, monthly, and, that, and that's what I usually use. I, I actually usually go a couple months, but um, I usually just do it manually because I don't want to risk being woken up and being like, oh, something's not working. So I usually just update it myself manually, but you do have an option to... Uh, uh, have this update automatically uh, and then you can set your theme here and you can send usage and error reports so here we go let's finish the install okay validate install okay let's log in here okay saying we have no devices that's fine Okay, it's saying there's some issue with the database. That's okay. Okay, they're saying there's no polar because we didn't set up cron yet. So it's saying there's no way to pull devices yet. Well, that's fine. We'll fix that in a minute here with the dispatcher service. Okay, so we're just going to hit this button here to attempt to fix this automatically. This is another way you can do this in the CLI, but I'm pretty sure this just works. I'm not sure what that actually does, but... Uh, so saying rerun it again. If you go up here, uh, validate config. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's fine. So now it's just complaining about the polar, which we will fix right now. Okay, we need to jump back into the shell to get this dispatcher service set up here. So if we look at the uh, configuration here under the Liberty MS docs, uh, this talks a lot about distributed polars in here and because you need the dispatcher service on all your polars and your you know your main Liberty MS server uh on there working that's the only way to work it won't work with cron job so you, it talks a lot about distributed polars but you don't need distributed polars to run the dispatcher service you can have just one polar which is the main server that we're setting up right here uh it's a polar it's the database it's the web server it's the rd storage uh it's everything all in one uh so yeah we can still use this so this is actually very easy to set up there's a whole bunch of stuff in here but i've come to find out you don't actually need to do almost any of this you just need to do one command but uh maybe two or three but let's go ahead and copy this anyway because we do definitely want to make sure that these are installed so if we go ahead and uh copy this pip3 install there's some uh, python stuff we need to put in here okay so actually to do this command i'm going to switch to the libri and ms user okay everything was already installed so uh we didn't need to really do that but that's fine Okay, so the part we definitely need to do is down here at the bottom. I uh, see it talks a lot about distributed polars and, uh, and and stuff like that, but we need to get the system D service um, installed here, and that is right here. Uh, this command. What this will do is actually copy the uh, LibreMS service to system D and enable it. Uh, let's see if it'll start it automatically. Also, but we need to copy this command. Okay, I need to go back out into the root user here. Okay, we're going to do systemctl status library and ms. Okay, this saying it started. Okay, all this is good here. Uh, when you're seeing all this is now the master dispatcher and the service is still running. So everything looks good with this. Okay, so let's go ahead and add our first device here. And I'm just going to add the local host that I added earlier. Okay, that's all going. Okay, and all these graphs will fill out as we move on. Okay, well, I think that ends the video here. Uh, we got the device added and everything's going to work fine. So uh, thank you again for watching.